So this is Dr. Kavita Singh, Associate Professor in Department of Civil Engineering in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So today uh, we are going to discuss the topic is about Introduction to GIS Part 2. So Part 1 we have already discussed in the previous lecture and we have just discussed about the GIS, what is GIS, what is the definition of GIS, what the GIS do, how it is applicable in different fields and how it is helpful to the users. So that introduction we have already discussed in the previous lecture. So few more uh, related topics are there to the introduction. So today we will be discussing. So in this topic we will be discussing about the different uh, types of uh, um, forums of GIS and what are the disciplines which are uh, contributing to the GIS part. This is all we are going to discuss today. So let us start with the uh, contents. So we have uh, here the contents what we have here is definition of 4Ms of GIS. So what is 4Ms we will be discussing and then what are the components of 4Ms. Uh, under that we have mapping, measurement, monitoring, modeling and we have contribution disciplines in GIS. So this all will be including in the introduction part. So this all we are going to discuss today. So let us start with the definition of 4Ms. So why are uh, this name it is called as 4Ms? Why we call it as 4Ms of GIS? The reason behind here is we have four M's means we have mapping, measurement, monitoring and modeling. So this all starts with M. That's the reason we call it as four M's. And these are the very important functions. These are the very important components uh, which every time the GIS uses. So without these components, the GIS is not at all possible. So that's the reason these four M's are very important whenever you work with GIS part. So first of all, just... Uh, uh, we collect what is GIS, we have discussed in the previous lecture. So GIS is about uh, the collection of hardware and software, a uh, setup of hardware and software where we can give the information, display the information, visualize the information, analyze the information and finally give a, a user friendly output to the users. So it is a hardware and storage system where we can get the entire geographical information all the uh, geography of the earth surface, all the entities whatever present on the earth surface that all information will be getting in the GIS setup, right? So that uh, setup when it is possible when we use this all this 4Ms while the operation, right? So 4Ms of GIS refers to the core components necessary for functioning of GIS system and these components are, these components are, these four components are mapping measurement, monitoring and modeling and are integral to the functionality. So these all are integrated together so then only we can just work with GIS and application of GIS enabling users to visualize. What is visualize? Visualize means they can just see entire information which is feeded in the system, in the GIS system and then they can analyze the data, then they can interpret the data and manage the spatial data effectively. So if they have this 4 M's, if they have the uh, process of mapping, if they have the process of measurement, then they have the process of monitoring and then modeling, then they can just go with this visualize, analyze and integral and interpret and manage the spatial data effectively. Now this is uh, the figure uh, we can see here, which is about the 4 M's of GIS. So here we can see 4 M's of GIS, we have measurement monitoring, uh, mapping and modeling. These four M's, four M's or components we can say of GIS are helpful in the mapping process, are helpful in the showing the results output of the data. So uh, by using this four M's we can just prepare this LULC. What is LULC? LULC is land use and land cover. Okay. LULC is land use and land cover, so which gives us the entire information which is utilized. The land use means the information, the features which are on the earth surface which are utilized by the uh, human beings that is called as land use. Then what is land cover? Land cover is the area which is covered by naturally. So naturally covered area is like forest areas, water bodies and all the resources which are covered naturally are called as land cover. Okay, so that all uh, mapping we can do, we can do the measurement in LULC, 
while preparing the land use land cover map we can just do the measurement we can monitor time to time uh, we can just do the mapping of uh, this land use land cover and then later we can do the modeling if you want to prepare a dem dem we call it as digital elevation model or if you want to prepare a, a, a triangular irregular network or something model you want to prepare with this kind of uh, land use land cover we can do with the 4 ms of gis same thing with the cadastral cadastral means it's a village level map okay so it's a village level map Where you find a very large scale map with a very high resolution data, so that village, that cadastral maps are easily uh, can be prepared with the help of the measurement, monitoring, mapping, and modeling. Right. So this all four things we use it, and we are able to prepare the uh, this kind of information like hydrology, hydrology which is related to the water. So all the water information, all the water resource information can be prepared with the help. the measurement monitoring mapping and modeling same thing with agriculture uh, we can just prepare this data with the help of this forms and later we can just go with this environmental assessment what is environmental assessment assessing the environment before going for any kind of uh, project setup uh, we are going to assess the environment what is the condition of the environment what is it present and what is the effect of that what particular project on the environment how much area is covered with land use how much area is covered with land cover how much area is utilized for that particular project that all assessment can be done with the help of this four ms that is measurement monitoring mapping and modeling so uh, even if you want to prepare this drainage network model drainage network model what is drainage network model so uh, when you want to uh, show in a single map how the drainage works like how the drainage flows in which direction that all direction if you want to show then that all drainage network modeling can be done with the help of this forms that is measurement monitoring mapping and modeling later our uh, terrain models we can prepare we call it as terrain models digital terrain models generally dtm is digital terrain model okay so digital terrain model will be helpful in just getting the information about the terrain condition what is the condition of the terrain where are the ups and downs that all information can be taken out with the help of this forms for ms r measurement modeling mapping modeling so this is very much important uh, in gis whenever we work with the gis operations we have to go through this mapping and modeling so let us go through this uh, all four components what basically it does So when you talk about map mapping, so this involves the visualization of the spatial data. So now uh, let us understand what is spatial data. Visualization of spatial data means uh, when you take a map, in a map you find many features, many features uh, which are many entities which are on the ground surface. Features we can call it as like roads we have. You have a building over here. We have a tree over here. You have a, a You can see lake over here or river over here. So these all features, this uh, uh, all features, what you can see, whatever we see around us, whatever we visualize, uh, that all data is called as a spatial data. So that spatial data uh, will be helpful by in mapping. It will be helpful us to visualize the data. So maps are primary output of GIS and serves as tools for analyzing the spatial relationships and patterns. So mapping includes the creation, uh, interpretation, and presentation of geographic data. So, uh, what is what does it mean? Creation means mapping. Uh, when you click a image, when you click a picture, or you get a satellite image, and if you want to prepare a map of some area, so what we do generally, first of all, what you want to create a rough map, right? So draft copy we prepare when we go with the satellite data, we interpret the information. And then finally, presentation of the geographic data will be in the mapping process. So this is what we do. This is the figure we have shown here. How does the mapping uh, goes on? So this is a kind of map you can see here. In the kind of map you can see, this is road. So this is some parcel here. So some tree over here. Different kinds of symbols. It is given some direction. Uh, it is given here. So in a map, a map will be always uh, with the Uh, it's with, with uh, always with the legend. So legend will be there here. 
So what what do you mean by legend? Legend means it will show the symbols. For example, uh, see here there is a tree here, a uh, tree here. So same tree will be shown in the box, and it will be written tree, right? So uh, if we, there is a water body here, so it will be shown here in the map, and same uh, figure will be shown in the legend box, and it will be uh, uh, set to as water body. Okay. So this is how the legend box will be there. This is how the map is prepared, which will show you the entire information. Like if you see, uh, in this uh, entire map, we can, it can show you the different uh, buildings. These are all buildings which are covered with the residential areas. Uh, here also you can see discovered with the residential areas. This is the road network. This is the water body with colors and with symbols we represent in the map. So this is uh, this is how the GIS will help you to visualize the spatial information. This entire information is called as spatial. Information, okay. So entire information is called as spatial information, which will give you the uh, uh, the exact features which are present in the Earth surface on the map. Right. Now, next coming to the measurement, what is measurement? This aspect focuses on the collection and quantification of spatial data. Uh, aspect uh, collection and quantification of spatial data. Again, it is called uh, here. We can come across. I can see here the spatial data. Spatial data means the data which you can see around us. That is called as spatial data. So, uh, it involves the determining the exact locations, distances, areas, and other geographical metrics. So, uh, like when you see the Google map, if you want to travel from one place to the other place, we just type the locations and we just try to see how much distance it is. So, we try to measure it and the locations and the areas and the other uh, geographical metrics, we can just go through this kind of information through this uh, measurement process. Okay. So, measurement is a crucial for accurately representing and analyzing the spatial phenomena. Uh, next, coming to the next thing is this is how the measurement looks like. So this is the satellite image you can see. Okay, satellite image. So it will show you the measurements from distance from here to here. Okay, or as if you want to see the distance from here to here. So this is how we can measure with the help of the scale in the given software. So uh, GIS gives you the even the measurement of the area, entire area. Or is the distance of the area wherever you want to uh, get to know. So monitoring, what is monitoring? Monitoring involves the observation, tracking of spatial phenomena over over time. Like tracking in sense, monitoring like when you travel, when we just uh, go through this Google map or we just do the tracking of the vehicle with the help of the GPS process. So that all helps us to do the tracking of the spatial phenomena. So this component is critical for applications such as environmental monitoring, urban planning, uh, disaster management and resource management. So this will be very much helpful for us to uh, monitor the environment. right? So when you con continuous monitor, if you want to monitor continuously, you can just take a satellite data, you can just take a map image and some updated information about the satellite and you can just go through the uh, updates or you can just go through the development activities going on in the entire area or a particular area. So in the urban planning also it is very much helpful. So it will show us the urban uh, information like how much area is covered, how much area you have to be covered and uh, how much area to be developed. Uh, uh, which kind of buildings are developed in some such areas and what type of uh, settlement it is, either industrial, residential or commercial, that all information is monitored uh, by through the GIS, like tracking we can do through the GIS. And disaster management, disaster manage is, management is very important part here. So disaster management will help us, uh, GIS will help you uh, to just display the disaster of uh, any area previously, how it was the condition of the disaster, what is the condition, and how much area is damaged, which area is safer, that all management can be done through the GIS process. And resource management, it is very much helpful in the resource management. So we have resources like water resource, uh, uh, forest resources, and uh, different kinds of resources which are very much important to us can be monitored through. GIS process. So it helps us to understanding changes and trends in the geographic 
landscape. So really we can just monitor with the help of the GIS because it visualizes you, it displays the information once you feed the spatial information in GIS. It will visualize you, it will give you the information about the present condition and the uh, future conditions. So nowadays like every time whenever you just check information in Google also, you there, that is called as monitoring, day to day information you can just monitor through that. So monitoring in GIS means all the developmental activities we can just developmental activities we can just manage and we can just monitor through the GIS process. Now coming to the modeling part. Uh, so modeling in GIS refers to the simulation and analysis of spatial process and systems. So spatial analysis, simulation, and uh, like uh, spatial process system means. Uh, we just um, do the analysis of the spatial information and just go try to do the modeling. Like, if you want to create uh, them, them is what digital elevation model. Like, if you want to show, if you want to show the area as uh, elevated, or if you want to show the model of the area, then we have to just do the analysis of such area. And we can run the spatial analysis process to see the digital elevation model. So it will show you the heights, ups and downs, or heights in a image. So that kind of modeling we can do, and it involves the creating mathematical, statistical models to predict future scenarios, analyze spatial patterns, and understand the interaction between different spatial elements. Modeling helps in decision making and planning by providing insight into the potential outcomes. This is how uh, the figure looks like of them when we are talking about digital elevation model. So, it, when you run this uh, analysis process, spatial analysis process or uh, simulation analysis process, then we can see the whatever data is feeded in the system, either spatial data or non spatial data, it will show you the output like this. Okay, it will show you the output like this. So, it will show you the elevations, it will show the model of that particular area. Now, you can even create this triangular irregular network uh, of an area. So, it will show you the heights of the particular area when you feed the information to GIS process. Now, uh, these are the forums. Now, coming to the contribution disciplines of GIS. So, what are the disciplines which are uh, contributing to GIS, how the GIS is uh, working and how it displays the data, which type of information is feeded to that software, which will show you this particular information. So we have uh, disciplines like geography, we have cartography, we have uh, mathematics, we have surveying, photogrammetry, digital photogrammetry, remote sensing technology, CAD, computer software, automatic cartography, and statistics. So these all disciplines will be contributing to GIS. So when a software is made, uh, this all contribution is taken to the uh, GIS process to uh, prepare the software. Right? So let us understand uh, geography. What is geography? So how does it contribute? So geography information system is a computer system that analyzes and displays the geographically reference information. And it uses data that is attached to the unique locations. Most of the information we have uh, about our world contains a location reference where uh, our USGS stream gauges located. So this uh, geography will give you the locations of the geographical features which are present on the earth surface, how it is located and how it is referenced, that all information is given by the geography uh, discipline, right? So that is one uh, important part. Mathematics is also contributing to GIS. So GIS is built on a foundation of several mathematical principles. So it is built on the certain mathematic principles. So that enables the manipulation, analysis, representation of spatial data. So the three key mathematical concepts uh, that underline the GIS are generally trigonometry and calculus. So this will help you to uh, make the software part. So many mathematical uh, models are used, many mathematical principles are used for the uh, creating the GIS software also. So, mathematics is also a very important discipline which contributes to GIS. Now, it's coming to the cartography. So, what is cartography? Cartography is related to the maps. 
So cartography is an old uh, map making technique. So all the cartographers which are related to this particular discipline, they used to prepare maps uh, and then they used to uh, travel based on that particular maps. Okay, so the cartography maps and GIS cartography is considered as the theory of practice and map ma making and map use, notably in the context of graphic communication. And the distinction between the conventional LNO cartography and modern digital cartography is sure. So cartography is related to the map systems. Now coming to the surveying. What is surveying? Surveying means uh, it uh, surveys the entire information like in uh, GIS is a basically it's like an entire uh, digital survey like uh, we can use this uh, GIS process through survey what we can receive is topo sheet maps and we can just include in GIS to sit uh, at one place and they can do the digital survey with the help of the surveying process. So process GIS surveying the uh, geographic information system survey creates a central location to collect data and analysis which is critical for modern planning, surveying and construction services. So it is very much important surveying is a uh, huge contribution to the GIS where it really gives the information about the planning and construction services and GIS will help us to display this all information for the further construction services. So with GIS professional land surveyors can increase the survey accuracy while reducing the cost. Now coming to the uh, CAD uh, computer software. So CAD and GIS are two types of spatial softwares like GIS captures, stores, analyzes and presents the spatial information visually. Meanwhile, computer-aided drafting, CAD will be um, just help us to, uh, with the help of the computer system, it helps us to make it, make it in a draft form and go, uh, just finally it will help us to uh, go for the construction works after the preparing the drawings through the CAD. So now, uh, talking about photogrammetry, photogrammetry uh, is very much helpful in a way. So here in the ortho rectified photos are commonly used in the geographic information information systems cartography to create maps and uh, the images can be broadly deployed once after their alignment or registration with the known coordinates are given to the uh, GIS system. Okay. Uh, next, uh, next coming to this. Uh, okay. Now photography again. So it is the uh, considered as the theory and practice of map making and map use notably in the context of graphic communication. The distinction between the conventional analog cartography and the modern cartography is contextual. A generalized definition of map may refer to it as a 2D and a graphic representation of the attributes of the spatial relationship of the GIS features. Now coming to digital photogrammetry. So photogrammetry is normally used with the aerial photos and that will be helpful in the GIS process. When you talk about the digital photogrammetry, that means we are using this photogrammetry process with the digital images which we receive from the photogrammetry and it is well established, which is helpful as to show the 3D uh, geometric information. It is a technique for acquiring the dense 3D geometric information uh, for the real world objects from the stereoscopic image. So it will give us the 3D information. So this is also contributing to GIS. It's a, uh, like gives us the 3D information, stereoscopic information of the image when you feed this photogrammetry information to the GIS process and overlap and has been shown to have uh, image, stereoscopic image overlap and has been shown to have extensive applications in a variety of fields. So digital photogrammetry is also very much helpful to uh, GIS discipline. So these all disciplines when you contribute together, uh, that forms a GIS process. And then finally, we have this remote sensing technology. So remote sensing technology, I hope you remember, we have a lot of discussions related to this remote sensing process in the previous more than 20 lectures. We have just discussed about the remote sensing process and photogrammetry process. So, what is remote sensing? I hope you remember. So, remote sensing is a process uh, without touching any object, without touching any physical contact to the object or on the ground surface, we are able to, or satellite is able to receive the information through the 
satellite and sensors. Okay, so remote sensing technology is also a huge contribution to GIS process. So uh, remote sensing technology GIS work together together store. Analyze and visualize data from the virtually and geographic uh, position on the earth. So it will help us to uh, work together to gather the information. How we gather the information? We gather the information through remote sensing. So remote sensing, remember, always it gives us the information and it can help us to give the entire information at a time. And this information, GIS, will helps to gather it, store this store it, analyze it and visualize the data uh, virtually and virtually and geographic position on the earth. Now irrigation and soil moisture monitoring and management are the major components of remote sensing in agriculture. So irrigation process also it's very much helpful and soil moisture monitoring it's also uh, GIS is very much helpful and management are major components of remote sensing in agriculture. So these are all uh, different uh, disciplines uh, we can just go through. Uh, with all these disciplines, the GIS will work. So to contribute this, uh, this all disciplines are very much important to make a GIS run or do the operation uh, to process it. These all disciplines are contributing to it. Uh, so uh, these are all about the introduction part, I mean uh, about the four M's and the contribution disciplines of GIS. Uh, then uh, you can just go through these references for the further contents like uh, in the Reddy book you can just go through uh, for the GIS process and later you can just go through this uh, links uh, for finding out more information about it and time chain book you can just go through for the uh, more uh, GIS operations in the process if you want to find out and later if you want to get more information you can just go through this remote sensing in GIS by B. Bhatia which is from the Oxford University Press New Delhi. So that's all for today. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.